I'm here in the midst of our coastal sage scrub habitat, and beside me there's Hazardia squarosa, we have Malasma laurina, and I'm under the shade of a toy pine actually. But the plant that I wanted to talk with you about is this one, Salvia mellifera. It's often called black sage. This is one of the staple plants of our coastal sage scrub plant community and they're great in the garden. So what I wanted to talk about is how we can make more of them. My favorite way to propagate plants is actually from seed. And the reasons behind that are that each individual grown from seed is genetically unique. And not only do you get a more diverse garden landscape in terms of the genetic representation through that method, you also are giving each generation through seed a new opportunity to um, essentially figure out which of those individuals are best adapted to that specific environment. So if you grow from seed over time, the individuals coming out of that propagation process tend to be better acclimated and better adapted to the particular environment that they're going to be growing in. But it's sort of slow and it can take years, in some cases, many years. We've actually been keeping an eye on a certain rare local oak species going on five years without even getting to the point of having seeds in hand yet. So seeds are preferable from my standpoint, but also much slower. And if you want to make a whole lot of plants quickly, the best way to do that is actually to propagate them from cuttings. And salvia mellifera, or any salvia for the most part, is pretty easy to root as a cutting and create more plants from them. So I actually have a little piece from the plant in my hand here. And you'll notice that there are leaves coming out of these little punctuated points along the stem. And before it fully leaves out, it's a bit more apparent than once this is a full blown shrub. But for now you see leaf, stem, leaf, stem, leaf, stem. Those leaf spots are known as nodes and the stem in between is referred to as an internode. The nodes, where those leaves come out is critical when you're doing propagation by cuttings because on a species like salvia, which comes from the mint family, so this is true for any of the other plants from the mint family, like mint itself, rosemary, for example, lavender, and a whole lot more, you need a node at the bottom of your cutting in order for it to root at all. So let me show you what I'm getting at. I'm gonna pull out the shears at this point. This would make a nice cutting in certain respects because it's a good size and you have a whole lot of nodes in a short space. But can you imagine the container it takes to get much of this underneath the soil, which is the idea with rooting and cutting? You'd need a fairly ridiculous container that was tall and narrow to make efficient use of space using this size and style of cutting. Instead, what we tend to do is to opt for just a few nodes, three to four nodes in most cases, with at least two of them ideally, but minimal of one at least one bare minimum, more is better, underneath the soil. What that means is that I'm gonna strip away these leaves. You can do this more delicately or more technically, but part of what I wanna show you today is that it doesn't require a fancy high-tech propagation facility to grow your own sage from cuttings. This now, is a little bit harder to tell where the nodes are, so let me point them out again. We have leaf, stem, what was leaf, stem, leaf, stem, leaf. So in this cutting, I actually have three nodes in little more than an inch with a couple of still leafed out nodes at the top. This is a beautiful salvia cutting, whether it's for black sage, salvia mellifera, white sage, which would be salvia apiana, or any of the other local or foreign salvias, the key point being that my cutting has a node on the bottom. And from here, once you have this nicely prepared cutting, you have options. You can stick this into a rooting hormone powder or gel or something to facilitate rooting. But part of why I like salvias and the mint family when it comes to working with cuttings is that they're so easy to root that you often don't even need that. And instead, I can stick this cutting 
right into a container. You want good soil contact. And I used a clear container in part to show you that, again, you don't need anything fancy. This is just a disposable drink cup, but also so that you could see that drainage is a critical component to the medium that you use for cuttings. If anything is gonna kill this thing, it's either gonna be that it's too dry or too soggy. The balance in between those is where we get roots. So most important aspect of your container choice is that it does have drainage holes in the bottom, which I've punched into this cup. Freely draining soil medium, a well-prepared cutting, and in many cases, that's all there is to it. This will give it a six weeks, two months. It's a new plant.